Welcome to the first episode of the TAP tutorial series. In this first overview, we're going to talk about TAP's parameters and demystify its interface in order to fully understand how its engine works and how to properly operate the plugin. Before even starting to make some noise with the plugin, it's important to understand the core idea behind it. TAP is a unique delay plugin which provides two delay lines working in parallel, each going through its own amplitude envelope and sharing a global time parameter. TAP's distinctive characters is also driven by the fundamental section parameter, which we'll talk about later in this video. Let's break down the interface and see what this device is capable of. First of all, the basic delay stuff. On the leftmost side we find the time, which allows us to set the frequency with which the plugin repeats the incoming audio, like any other standard delay effect. Time can be either set in milliseconds or synced to the DOS tempo by using the lower left buttons to switch between each mode. When in sync, the time knob gets replaced by a time measurements indicator, which we can use to set a tempo interval relative to the host PPM settings. The signal travels across the rest of the parameters from left to right and reaches the feedback control, which states how much of TAP's output gets fed back into itself, essentially increasing the tail of each repetition. Again, a pretty standard control for any delay unit. The signal is then sent through a filter, which acts as a low pass when turned to the left and as a high pass when moved to the right. The last processing unit in TAP signal path is the mix control, which allows us to balance between the dry clean signal and the completely wet and processed output. Moving the knob all the way to the left equals to hearing the clean signal, while all the way to the right will cause only TAP's output to be heard. This covers the most basic elements of the interface. With them out of the way, we can now dive a bit deeper into the rest of the parameters, which are unique and exclusive to TAP. The two delay lines are independent and can be balanced by using the slider in between the two envelope graphs. Each delay line has also the option of reversing the repetitions by pressing the respective arrow just on the right of the slider. For now, let's focus only on the upper ones since they're pretty much identical. Each one of them has its own independent amplitude envelope. Envelopes can be shaped according to our needs by using their respective set of controls. Going from left to right, the first thing we see is a switch, which allows us to turn on or off the envelope itself. Keep in mind that switching the envelope off might lead to some clips in the audio signal if applying some timeline manipulation such as reverse or repeat, since no amplitude modulation nor fades will be applied. Proceeding to the right, we have a waveform selector which allows us to choose the envelope's curve type. We can set it to be more rounded and smooth or more triangular and precise. The next two parameters you might be familiar with if you have played around with WAV before. The first one, PEAK, can be used to move the highest point of the envelope around Moving it to the left will place it at the very beginning of the cycle, while turning it to the right will shift it toward the end. The second parameter, warp, is instead used for squeezing or expanding the waveform, increasing or decreasing the silent intervals before and after the envelope, all while keeping the cycle length consistent. Finally, on the very rightmost side of the row, there's the length parameter, which allows us to set the envelope's length. At this point, you might get a bit confused by the difference between cycle's length and envelope's length. How do we set the cycle's length if the envelope swung gets a different parameter? 
The answer is the section parameter. Remember that in the beginning we spoke about it driving Tap's entire engine. We waited this long to talk about it just because it's easier to understand what section does if thinking about the envelopes. Think about the delayed signal as a constant flow of echoes. The frequency of their repetitions is based off the time setting. Now think about taking that signal and running it through a chain of effects and an amplitude envelope. The time resolution at which the effects and the envelope are triggered is what section defines. For this reason, envelope cycles lengths are determined by section, as well as all of the remaining parameters in the center of tap. In the same way we do with time, we can have a section to be set either in milliseconds or synced with those tempo by using the switch in the lower right part of the interface. This way we can have, for example, a really fast delay going through a really slow amplitude modulation and start creating interesting textures. or else the other way around. Let's bring back the lower delay line now. As we told before, both delay lines are identical. Each has its own envelope and reverse button and can be set independently from the other one. However, the lower one can also be offset from the first one by using the gap control, which is the dial we find right below section. This parameter allows us to control how much gap there's going to be between the two by calculating a percentage value of the current section. With the knob all the way to the left, such percentage will be zero and they're going to start playing back at the same time, while all the way to the right a percentage of 100% will be applied causing the second delay line to start playing back a whole section measure after the first one. After making the main structure of tab clear, we are now ready to explore the rest of the engine and the remaining processing parameters. We are going to demonstrate them in the next video, so make sure to check that out as well. <laughs>